All I wanted was to be a regular guy, just one of the boys who did his best beside the rest of his team. Doing my best took application, and as I said to a family friend, it meant practicing what my father preached. My name is Quentin Roosevelt, and when your father's a giant, it made being a regular guy a darn sight harder to achieve. All four of us Roosevelt boys felt that pressure, being the sons of Teddy Roosevelt when we served together in World War I. So did our sister Ethel, who enlisted as a nurse. But the thing is, we were practicing what he preached. From day one, we were taught to treat everyone as equal and to stand on our own feet. Within days of the war starting, Father wanted to form a division and send all of us boys, his sons, to fight as privates. That's just the kind of man he was. Personally, I was blessed and blighted by inheriting his rebellious streak. It often landed me in trouble, starting off with the White House gang of tearaway kids. Myself, Charlie Taft, and Rosewell Pinckney were known for doing naughty things, like carving a baseball diamond into the White House lawn and lobbing spitballs at the presidential portraits. I even smuggled a pony into my brother Archie's bedroom when Archie got sick. But with that streak came the drive I needed. It got me through school with top marks, then Harvard, where I was on the way to my first degree when the war intervened. For me, given my restless nature, that some called reckless, along with a talent for mechanics and a passion for flying, there was only one choice. I just had to become a pilot, saying goodbye to Flora, the love of my life and fiance. For her, for anyone on the ground, the sky's the limit. But up there, I had no limits. All I had to do was break free of an instructor's job and survive a crash landing before making it to the front. The crash, which happened after my motor exploded, left me hanging in a tree with my airplane destroyed and my body busted up. My odds of dying rose again when I joined the 95th Aero Squadron on June the 24th, 1918. But that didn't matter a hoot. Finally, I was with a crack American fighting unit flying Newport 28s against the Germans. On July the 10th, I stalked and shot a Fokker down, immediately writing to Father when I landed. It was one of my last letters home. My turn came just four days later when I refused to run from seven enemy fighters behind the German lines. When I fell, killed by two machine gun bullets, I didn't fall alone, and it broke my father too. Teddy Roosevelt, who never fully recovered and died himself six months later on January the 6th, 1919. Quentin's history was proudly read by his great nephew, Richard Williams. <laughs>